This inequality, uh, what was the kind of in my way? So, now, one of the things you definitely should have picked up in class last time is the distribution between inequalities. And actually, this is an inequality, it's not an equation. And I really should have asked you to do absolute value equations rather than absolute value inequalities. Okay. So I'm going to solve the equation. And I apologize for asking you to do something that you really didn't get covered. If the equation is this, then this splits into two equations. Okay. So if you solve this, and you get the yeah, three on both sides, you get nine, and divide by two, you get x equals nine to half. And solve this one, the f three on both sides, you get two x equals negative three, x equals negative three halves. Plug that back in, you get a negative three to negative three is negative six. Like this in here, two times this is nine, nine minus six, three is six, so it works. And you should do this check. Okay. And this would be solved even more easily if I use equality. Okay. So I'm not going to address what happens in inequality because uh, I don't think. So, if you solve inequalities and understand or solve equal, absolute value equations, and understand that they split into two equations, then for this course, um, what was the number I have here? Okay. okay. Uh, I'm okay with it. Okay. Now, one other thing that I'll address that's not part of the quiz here is that if you have an absolute value equation like 2x, absolute value of 2x minus 3, if you use these expressions, equals absolute value of x plus 4. Well, absolute value of 2x minus 3 could be 2x minus 3, right? Or it could be negative the quantity 2x minus 3. Because this is a little tricky, as I mentioned last time, I figured so the math would make the point. The thing of absolute value of that, well, what is the absolute value of x? Absolute value of x. Is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to zero. What if it isn't? How is the absolute value of negative five related to the absolute value of five? Let me pause and we'll talk about that. Okay, so if x is greater than or equal to zero, we agree that absolute value of x is not equal. For example, absolute value of five is five. Absolute value of any number. It's not negative is equal to that number. Absolute value of negative five, though, is five. So how do we get five out of negative five? Well, you got the answer. You multiply by negative one, right? So we could say that if x is less than zero, excuse me, your answer, it's negative one times x. If x is less than zero, now it's badly written. 
I'm sorry, uh, I gotta tell you, this is February. It usually happens a little later than February. And almost every year, two things happen in February. My swimming times go down. I get stronger, more energetic, whatever. Okay? And I get brain fog. <laughs> okay. I don't know how those two things seem to happen at the same time of the year. But the brain fog causes me to have a little trouble organizing things. And that might go on for a couple of weeks. <laughs> Hope not, but better than it was over the weekend. Over the weekend, it was terrible. Routine tasks, I could do them, but you know, as soon as it got complicated, uh, I don't know. It's been going on for half my life, at least half my life. It's not function of age, although maybe with age, it's a little worse than it was, but not necessarily. Uh, so I couldn't tell last year because of COVID year and everything, I couldn't tell I really have brain fog or not because everything is going crazy. Uh, so if I, if I do even dumber things than I usually do, I don't help it right now, but it goes away. At least I always have. Okay. So, uh, I didn't write this out very well. I'm going to use it here. So, this could mean, could mean, it's true if 2x minus 3 equals x plus 4, isn't it? Okay. Because this absolute value could be 2x minus 3, and this absolute value could be x plus 4. Okay. For some values of x. And if it's true for those values of x, then it's true. It's also true if the negative of 2x minus 3 equals x plus 4. Okay? Now, it's also true, you can write out every possibility. It's also true if negative of 2x minus 3 equals negative of x plus 4. Because it's absolute value, you know, the absolute values could be these, okay? But this is the same equation this is. Just multiply both sides by negative 1 and you get this equation, right? Okay. And it could be true if 2x minus 3 equals the negative of x plus 4. In other words, every possible way to put a sign on the 2x minus 3 and the x plus 4 gives you an equation that would solve whose solution would satisfy this equality. Okay. But these two equations are just identical to these because if you multiply this one by negative 1, it changes the signs and you get this one, right? So these two are redundant. They have exactly the same solution that these two do. Okay. Well, in this case, subtract x from both sides, you get an x. Add 3 to both sides, you get a 7. You can sell that very quickly. You're going to get x equals 7. You can verify that. If I have an arithmetic mistake, you can correct it. Okay. Over here, you're going to have a negative 2x, and you're going to subtract x, you're going to get negative 3x over here. You have a plus 3, so you're going to subtract from 4 to get 1, and you get x equals 1. Okay, so this equation gives you this solution, and this equation gives you this solution. Just to see if I somehow in my brain fog did this right, it plug. 7 in for x, you get 14 minus 3, which is 11, right? Plug 7 in here, 7 and 4 is 11. So this certainly checks out. Um, and we've got, got a question, let me pause. Okay, so uh, let's, let's just go ahead and uh, substitute x equals 1. I'm not sure I did that. 
x equals one, we get two x minus three is going to be negative one. So this is going to give you one. And if x equals one, this doesn't give you one. So I did something wrong in my head. So I have the negative two x minus three. That's going to give me, I think I did a three when I should have done a six. So you're going to get two x, well, you're going to get a negative six here, which you're going to add to this side. So you're going to get negative three x equals 10. Now, this wasn't the question, but I did have a mistake here. Yeah, I pretended to make a mistake so I could uh, <laughs> emphasize the fact that you want to check your solutions, right? You just right. did. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I made a mistake, but that's all right because I knew I was going to check my solution, right? And I kind of trusted my head, but then I. Uh, no, actually, that's not right because this isn't multiplied by two. I told you about the brain part. This gives us a three. I didn't divide by the three. This probably doesn't look any different than what it did before the brain fog hit. I still made mistakes like this. Okay. You got to get negative three x equals one. So x equals negative one third. Now, this is my third try. I hope this one checks out. Negative one third of two x, well, that's negative two thirds. Three is nine thirds. So two thirds, that's a negative 11 thirds. So that's 11 thirds. If I do negative one third plus x, I get three and two thirds, which is 11 thirds. So I get a negative 11 thirds here, but it's an absolute value, so it comes out 11 thirds, and this gives me 11 thirds. Okay? <laughs> So if you do it carefully and actually write out the equation, which I didn't want to do, I didn't want to get confused in the details of solving these equations, which everybody's able to do, uh, you get these solutions. And that's really what you need to see. Okay, why did I not write out all four equations? Well, I did. Okay, logic is absolute value two x minus three might be two x minus three. It might also be negative of 2x minus 3, right? So this is one of these two. The absolute value of x minus 4 might be x plus uh, x plus 4. It might be x plus 4. It might be the negative of x plus 4, right? So over here, I wrote down the other two possibilities. Because notice I didn't have a negative of x plus 4 in either one of these, right? So I wrote down this. With the negative of the 2x minus 3, with the negative of the x plus 4, and I wrote out this with the 2x minus 3 and the negative of the x plus 4. That's all possibilities. Okay. In other words, we either have this or it's negative, we either have this or it's negative. Okay. So we either have a positive and a positive, a positive and a negative, a negative and a positive, or a negative and a negative. That's four possibilities, but this equation is identical to this equation because we can multiply by negative one. If you multiply by negative one, this equation becomes this equation. So you get this, and this equation is identical, has identical solutions at least with this equation. Okay. So again. Two possibilities, positive or negative. Two possibilities, positive or negative. That's four possibilities. Positive, 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 negative, negative, positive, negative, negative. Okay. And I've written out the equation all four ways. But I wrote down these two first. And then I wrote down these two and observed that they were the same as these two. So that's why when you went to Google, you write out four equations. Well, that's what I did. Okay. That's what you want to do because you want to understand why this is true so you remember what to do. Okay. You know, logically, that's a little bit more complex than a lot of things. But if you understand that complexity, then you're way ahead. Uh, if all you do is the rule is, well, you do this, uh, okay. But if you understand why you're doing it, you're going to be less likely to write it out wrong and be confused. Um, or, 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 or. Okay, so anyway.
it comes down to these two equations. If I solve these two equations, I get exactly the same thing. Okay. Here are your solutions. So. Okay. Notice that this equation is using the same sign on both sides, the positive of this and the positive of this, okay? Here you're using the negative of this side and the negative of this side, which is gonna give you exactly the same equation, exactly the same solution. Now here, you got a negative on one side, a positive on the other. Here you got a negative on one side and a positive on the other. Again, the solutions are identical. So if you do one with the two positives and one with a negative and a positive, and it doesn't matter which is negative and which is positive, then you're going to get it. So well, that's just okay. I think this is inequality, and and uh, I thought the wrong solution. I couldn't spot the, the, the error, but let's just. Uh, uh, I don't want to subtract three. I just want to subtract the two. So one my x is over here. Uh, so you get three x plus three less than five x. Then subtract three from both sides. Wait a minute. I don't like the order I'm doing this in. I don't use a brain fog or an excuse. I don't need a Okay. That didn't get me where I wanted to go. This will. Okay, so you end up with 3x less than 5x minus 3. Then you subtract 5x from both sides. And you end up with negative 3 over here. And you end up with negative 2x over here. Okay. Then you divide by negative 2. What's wrong with that? Yeah, we got to switch that to equality. So if we just write it down without thinking, how bad I did intentionally, so you could correct me, but if you just write it down without thinking, you got to mess up. So anytime you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to reverse that inequality, which gives you x greater than we have. Okay. Now to check that, if x equals three halves, three halves of three is nine halves plus five, and five times so it's nine halves plus ten halves, which is nineteen halves. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nine halves plus ten halves. Yeah. Right. And this is oh yeah, fifteen halves plus four halves is nineteen halves, right? Brain fog is just one half two, and I'm putting that over top denominator. Okay, so it works if x equals well, if x equals three halves, these are equal. Now this has got to be less. Okay, so just pick a value of x that's bigger than three halves, like two. If x equals two, you get six plus five, which is 11, right? And you get 10 plus two, which is 12. Okay, so it works for a value of x greater than two, it works so that you know you've got this thing in the right direction. Another way and a thing you've got to kind of think about, you want to think about is if x is really, really big, okay? Now, the five and the two don't matter a hill of beans. X is a really big number. Three X is going to be less than five X, right? So you kind of say as X approaches infinity, it's very clear that this is going to be less than this. So you know that the positive infinity solution works. Now, you don't have to get used yet the positive infinity uh, notation, but you will in free calculus, and we'll get to a little bit of it in this course, okay?
So really, the concept is if X is really big, if X is a million, then you have three million and five compared to five million and two, right? Well, three million and five compared to five million and two is pretty much just three million compared to five million, right? Your percent difference because that plus two and plus five are insignificant. Very clear that when X gets really big, you're really just comparing the three X and the five X. That's kind of an important point that you can come back to and think about a little more. Uh, we'll help you in one of the things in pre-calculus that people tend to have a little bit of trouble with. Um, okay, so the last part of this is the graphic. So we put zero here. You put three halves any place you want to because the scale is up to you. Okay, just don't put three halves to the left of zero, right? Uh, on the right. And then you just say, okay, I know it's going to go like this, right? Number to the right because X is going to be greater than three halves. Can't be three halves, so you put an open circle around it. Three half indicate that that's not included. Okay, if it was greater than or equal to, which it would be if this was less than or equal to, then you fill in that dot. Okay, so I think open math tells you what you need to know about that. Okay, now there were some points you needed to graph, and everybody got that pretty quickly. So I think we'll do the graph and so that's good because that's going to become really important. Draw this graph. I think I did this before. I put negative two here and two here because the points I gave you were negative two, four, one half, one four, and two, four. So I need negative two, I need two, so here we have it. And I need four up here. Then if I cut this out of one half, I get one. Except this and half, I get one half. And your one half should be half as big as one. Which means that this interval is going to be twice as long as either of these intervals, right? If you do it this way, your graph will be reasonably well scaled. Oh, yeah, we got all kinds of stuff. I'll talk still. You do spill something, don't see anything. Just point to it. I'll grab a paper towel for you. Okay. Uh, over here, of course, the same thing is going to give us negative one and negative one half. Then the interval from zero to four, divide it in half, we get two. Divide that in half, we get one. Divide that in half, we get a half. And divide that in half, we get a fourth, right? So we divide these things in half because we're going to need a fourth. Okay, well, then we graph negative two, four, one half, one four, two, four. And the graphs I saw ranged anywhere from pretty good to really good. Okay. <coughs> so, pretty well pleased with what you all doing there. All right. Well, that's your introduction to graphing, but that will go a little further with that here in just a minute. Okay, okay, straight line. Okay, now let me look more. That's uh, the headings here. Uh, we're talking about intercepts, then we're talking about slope. Okay. Um, Maybe we're in focus, but I don't think so. Well, I got to stop for a minute. And get, oh, there it is. There it is. As soon as I threaten to stop, it gets in focus. That's where it leaves my mind. Uh, probably to its disadvantage. Um, straight lines. Okay. Uh, X 
x and y are both linear when you write the equation of a straight line. So for example, x plus seven y equals 30 is going to give you a straight line. We'll see exactly what that means and exactly why in a minute. This is linear, this is not linear. This is not linear because linear equation, you just have a multiple of x plus a multiple of y equals some other number. Okay. The linear equation has the form ax plus by equals c. And that's exactly the form of the first equation. If A is 2 and B is 7 and C is 30, this is what you get. Okay. This equation can't be written in this form because the x is in the denominator. It's not a multiple of x, it's something divided by x, right? Okay. And similarly here, this is not x, this is the square root of x. Okay. And what we end up with, these equations would have graphs, but they wouldn't be straight lines. Okay, well. If you have an equation like 4x plus 3y equals 12, then I don't know what it is about that room next door, but it acts like an amplifier. Everything comes right through. Uh, and if you got somebody to talk to a loud voice, it really comes through. I used to have Dave Collins teaching over there. Dave Collins is one of the best guys in the world. Okay. A couple of years older than I am, he's still doing well, but he's retired. And, and uh, you know, I, I'd always have him close the door. Hey, well, I was going to ask him to quiet down. I mean, he seems to do it. Great job over there, and he needs to express his personality, right? Uh, if I was teaching over there, I wouldn't want somebody to say, Can you tone it down? Uh, so, yeah, pull the door closed. Okay. Uh, okay, so you got this. Okay. Now, we know. Just ask this question. If x is zero, then what's the value of y? Can you show me with your fingers? Think about it for a minute. Yeah. Y well, is going to be four, right? If x is zero, Y, okay. So you plug in zero for X and you just get three Y equals 12 and you divide both sides by three and get four. You probably just look at that to get the solution. Okay. Thus, the point zero four, Lies on the graph of 4x plus 3y equals 
12. Okay. Because x equals zero, y equals four satisfies the equation. And the graph of this equation consists of all the points that satisfy the equation. Okay. So there are infinitely many points. So you got to figure it out for every possible point. But this point is regularly used. Okay. It's the y-intercept. Okay. Zero four is the y-intercept. Because when you graph it, understand that, right? You just do it. You, you, you plug the number in. And the intercepts of a graph, when you get into more complicated functions, you get the x-intercept by letting y equals zero because what's the coordinate of any point in the x-axis? The y-coordinate of any point in the x-axis is zero, right? So if you let x, if you let y equals zero, you're going to get a point on the x-axis. If you let x equal zero, you're going to get a point in the y. So this is something you always do, whether it's a linear equation or any other type. You can always write the equation that you have to solve to figure out what that point is. Doesn't mean you can always solve the equation, but you can at least write it out. Okay? You just whatever the equation is, you let all your x is equal zero, you get the equation for the y intercept. You let all your y's equal zero. You Get the equation for your x axis. So that's something you do in general. So kind of get me to it. I'm not going to label these marks. Okay. So we have this point. Now we've got two points, and we know the graph is a straight line. Okay. So x and y both linear. Implies a straight line graph. I haven't proven that. We probably won't prove it this way. We'll just accept it. So, yeah, here's our, here's our graph, right? Now, according to this graph, what does it look like the value of y is if x equals well we can estimate that from the graph of course we can plug in two for x and solve Okay, but don't do that yet. Just estimate from the graph. And, and I'm going to ask you to write down what you think the value of y would be if x equals 2, which means you want to find the point on this graph whose x coordinate is 2, right? 
So where's the point? What's the point of the line for x equals two? Just looking at the graph above, what would you estimate? Like is y between three and four? No, what's it between? Okay. So, well, to see it. Pretty close, point three. Yeah, but I take it. Really? Government work. Yeah, well, you want to close this. You have 